Hello everyone. I'm working on a project that's kind of cool and I wanted to share it with you. I'm using the forms module and it involves building a custom form handler or form extension um, to handle the form in a certain way and, and do some extra things before uh, sending off you know form notifications like it normally would. Um, so basically this company wants people to use this form to pre-populate a specifications document and this is an example of the specifications document as I would get them um, and these green values are uh, what needs to be replaced with the form input and I've got an example right here of one that I've already replaced input dot operating temperature and that's basically saying it's going to take the operating temperature value from the form and put it here and this is twig I'm going to render this with the twig uh, parsing engine and, uh, and then I'm going to cause a download response from the form um, before sending off all the emails. So the key to this really is the, the form handler. And I've got the custom form handler here. I call it a spec form extension. And notice that it provides for the forms module, and it provides a form handler, and the type is spec. So when you create a new form or... Um, that's why it shows up here and not all of the other extensions because it's searching for that provision string. So when you create a spec form, it's going to be just like any other form. It's going to require all the same fields, but it also has this down here. And this is where they would search or upload their specification template. And the specification template's what I'm working on right here. So after I uh, change all of these green values to inputs, I would upload it and, and match it up with the field assignments for the form. Um, and the way that this is added is by the integrate method on the extension. So if we go back over to the extension, here's the builder. Uh, this, the builder method returns the actual form builder for uh, displaying the form. And we'll get into that here in a second. But the integrate method is when we, let's look at the forms controller. This is the forms controller for, for the forms module. So if you're creating or editing a form, it runs this integrate method just before rendering on both ends and that allows you to hook into it and do some cool things maybe add um, a child form like what we're doing here and if we jump into that integrate method you'll see that we're using the configuration module so I'm not using a stream to save that uh, this well technically I'm using the configuration module to get that in and out and the configuration module is just a super fast easy way to tack on data to something. It's all powered by streams and field types still, so it's pretty pretty comfortable to use if you're used to everything else. Um, I get the initial value, and in this case, uh, it's finding by the key and scope or returning a new instance. And the scope is going to be uh, the namespace of this extension and then spec template. And the, uh, I'm sorry, that's the key. And then the scope is the ID, and I'm getting this out of the request Path. This is the ID of the form. So when I want this value later, I can look it up by the extension namespace and the ID of the form and then use that. Uh, and so I'm just adding uh, the field manually here and then I'm adding it in a section and I'm adding some saved. So after the configuration form is saved, it's setting the namespace and it's setting the ID based on the form that we're working with at the current time. So we don't have to pull it from um, the path at that point because we'll have a, a an entry already built and available to us. So that's how I, I get that value into the system. And if we go back to uh, the builder, let's go back up here. All this is doing is returning our form builder to display on the front end. And there's some, some modifications there too. So... We are using our own custom form builder. Most, I think the standard form builder just uses like a, a standard from from core form builder. Nothing special. All this does is disable bread, breadcrumbs. Um, and then we use callbacks to handle uh, my custom logic, the, the, the things that we need to change after the fact. So this is going to happen after notifications are sent. It's going to happen after um, the form is submitted <clears throat> and the entry has been saved already. So after it's saved, what we're going to do is use our configuration and the form here, the form ID, and we're going to pull that configuration value out. So we'll have the ID 
of the file. And then this get file is just a, a helper command to get a file instance from the files module by ID, path, uh, location, uh, namespace, whatever. So we've got this file, it's a file interface, and we're going to set the, res we're gonna create a response using the downloader. So the files module comes with a utility to create a download response, and you can provide it a file to download. So it's gonna use that for the name uh, and extension and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna create basically a response to download that file, and we're gonna set the builder's form response. So instead of a redirect response like what would normally happen, we're gonna override that and set a download response. And we're also gonna take that response and set its content using the rendered uh, uh, content. So we're gonna take the response content, which we have from before, from up here, which is basically the file content of our spec template. We're gonna do some RTF magic. Everything is slashed, so we're gonna convert uh, slash escaped tags into non-escape so that twig will recognize them. And then we're gonna use the template, which if you look up here, is a utility from Streams platform that we're importing to uh, use Twig to parse a string. And we're just gonna parse the content of that response and we're gonna use the form entry of the builder, which is the um, front end form that we're, that we're submitting. So it's got all the inputs that I've assigned for that particular form. And then we're going to force it to a string with the render method. So what's happening is the form builder, after everything's saved, everything is cool and done, we're going to fire this call, this callback. We're going to set a response to download the file that we've selected when we created the form, which is the spec template. And then we're going to take <clears throat> the content of that response, which is just the content of that file, pull it out real quick, parse it with twig, and then set it back, and then set the whole response on the builder so that instead of redirecting elsewhere, it's just going to um, download the, the form. And so then I'll probably use something like JavaScript on the front end to handle a success message and possibly redirect them elsewhere. So on the front end, it looks a little bit like this. Just a simple form right now. It's got the fields that we want. Let's fill it out here. Yeah, right. Uh, let's just use some whatever values, mm, special requirements, download. And so here's our downloaded file, and it's got our values in there already. Uh, what would be a good one? Buried duct. Here we go. 10 inches operating pressure. Oh, that's a typo on their part, but that's where the values get parsed in. So um, now they've got it. The admin can download it on their end, and it saves some time with manual input and having to collect this over the phone or whatever. So that's how it works. Um, let me know if you guys have questions.